Hi everybody, it's Alexandra from Marlowe Room by Room. I'm here in a client's condo about to take some pictures of their project, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you how to take photos of your projects for your interior design purposes. Now, I'm gonna give you a few tips, but we're gonna start with talking about equipment. Uh, you don't need anything more high-tech than your cell phone, it's perfectly fine, but just uh, try to avoid the temptation of using your wide-angle lens. It does tend to distort the photos, and we just need your regular lens, it's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna give you some tips as we work around the room and record this space so that when we get to work on the project, we've got everything we need to get started. So come with me. So there are three main things you need to know when photographing your room. The first is that you're gonna take eight photographs, one from each of the four corners and one from the center of each wall. That way we can stitch together a 360 degree view of the space. The second thing you need to know is that you always wanna be holding your camera lengthways, so horizontally rather than vertically. And the reason for that is because we wanna get a good broad view of each corner and each wall, but we also wanna make sure that we can see the ceiling line and the floor line in the photograph, so be watching for that. The last thing you need to do is take a picture or two of the ceiling so that we can understand the lighting, any of the other design features in the ceiling, and that will really help to bring the whole view together. So let's get started. We're gonna take a picture from this corner over to the opposite corner. Okay, and then we're just gonna walk around the room and pull it together naturally. So here, we're at the center line of the wall, looking straight across. And then we're gonna just shift over to this corner here. Be careful of the cactus over there. If you've ever been poked, it's not fun. There we go. And then the center line of this window wall behind me. Now this is a really good time to talk about open concept spaces. So with this particular client, we're not actually designing the kitchen. But what we wanna do is make sure that we take note of the materials and the color palette so that our design for the living room can flow nicely with the kitchen that is already existing. All right, and so we're back to this corner. We're gonna get as tight into the corner as we possibly can without trampling the plants. And then again to the center of this wall. Great. And then back over here to this corner. All right, and then over here to the center point of the boundary line. Now the reason I say boundary line is because we're working in an open concept space. So I want to make sure that I observe the boundary line by creating an invisible wall when I take my photographs from which to find the center point. The reason is because if I had taken the photo from further back into the kitchen, I would have distorted the view of the space by making it look much larger than it actually is. So when you are working in an open concept space, create a, an invisible wall at that boundary line. So now, last but not least, we wanna take a couple shots of the ceiling and we wanna be mindful that we've got any lighting, bulkheads, grills in the ceiling or ceiling details. So one or two pictures should do it. Perfect. And that is, that's it. So that's photography for interior design. Now, if you need help measuring your spaces, you can click the link on the video here. And if you're looking for help with inspiration for your spaces, how to pull your visions together, you can click the link on the video here. Thanks very much for watching. We're really looking forward to helping you pull your Marlowe room by room projects together. Thanks again, bye for now. <laughs>